Nobody is going to come save you. We, we have to do this as a collective. And it is really, really difficult to even convince people of that simple thing. There's an overall frustration with the system, lack of appreciation, a complete lack of understanding of how this political system actually works too. I think Trump has mastered the art of blasting out so many lies to the point where you have to swim through them and you can't fact check fast enough because they keep coming at you. The overarching problem is around education. There has been a lot of misinformation and disinformation spread intentionally targeting the black male demographic. The idea that a black woman Woman should have to minimize herself and a whole less space is absurd. They do not want to dare hear fact because God forbid they internalize some facts that dispels the bull that they want to be screaming about. Like Hello beautiful black people. See, and no one ever says anything. That's why. Oh, I hey, hey. I, thought, hey. I thought you were talking to the people watching. Yeah, we don't. Oh. We don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. You're right. Okay. I don't get called beautiful a lot, so I didn't know what no, to I say. I thought, oh, I yeah. thought you were talking to the beautiful <laughs> black people watching for some reason. It's like, oh, beautiful <laughs> black people. That can't mean no, us. That's <laughs> some other people. Those other beautiful black people. <laughs> No, it's yeah, literally man. all. Okay, so I brought y'all here to have, I think, hopefully, one of my last conversations for this exhausting ass election season. Exhausting. Exhausting. Yeah. I like, I want this Good to word. end so bad. And next election mm -hmm. season, I'm not going to acknowledge an election season at all. No one is getting me to even Same. even acknowledge it's happening. I don't yep. care what. I'm not. I'm not in it. <laughs> I want no parts. <laughs> mm -hmm. But. I brought y'all here because so I wrote I, I did a video recently talking about Obama's comments uh, about, uh, you know, him feeling like some black men who are like reluctant to vote for Kamala are doing it because, you know, sexism. And that has got like that got a lot, a lot of discourse. And I mm -hmm. tried to tackle that as nuanced as I thought. And honestly, I feel like the comments disappointed me more. Like it was funny because I felt like I explained like I understand I'm sensitive I understand why people are sensitive to Obama saying that because there is a, a real reality of black men being like scapegoated and painted like this really regressive group that doesn't like vote progressively when in fact like black men majority like right right underneath black women are the like by a lot vote for Democrats and stuff more than anybody yeah. else. Right. So like I wanted to speak to that as a real thing and I get that. But I, on on the flip side of that, I'm like, it's not untrue. I think it is really unrealistic for people to act like it's untrue that there are black men and men in general. Yes, there are tons of men there. I'm sure it's worse in, in the other racial demographics by, by far for sure, but we're black people. And, and in the case of this election, like Obama, Kamala needs overwhelming black support because Obama, I think we forget like Obama never won the white vote. None of the Democrats win the white vote, even the white candidates, right? Like they, how Obama won was because of record black turnout. So it's not just that we know black people always, black people that vote majority vote Democrat, but it's about the turnout. So it like, it made sense why Obama is speaking to that. Cause I think he's not just, people took it as like this overall indictment of black men and black men who aren't voting and black men with reasons why they're not against the democratic party. But it seemed very clear to me that he was speaking specifically to black men who he feels otherwise would support the, whoever the Democratic candidate is, but are now mm -hmm. looking for a reason to not support Kamala. And I thought like that was as nuanced as I could do it. And the way the funny, like the comments, I got a lot of comments and a lot of feedback. And honestly, it was interesting because the black men in my comments that were given feedback, you know, granted, I'm sure there are people who are bots and whatever, but insofar as I could see, they were very mad about Obama's comments while also saying things that solidified Obama's comments. Like I was like, by the time I read their comments, I felt like I actually gave too much grace. Cause I was like, not for nothing. We can see, I can see the, like the amount of black men that are all over our social medias, all over interviews, like black men of note, you know, saying these crazy sexist things and all these different things. Mm -hmm. But I recognize that they're also overrepresented. They're given more attention. They're given more like, cause that's who the, that's the black man that they want to show us that. And so I, I was like, I'm not gonna, acknowledge that in this i'm gonna you know give the grace of that argument but the way they are in my comments like I, like i understand being frustrated with the democratic party i fully get that but i don't understand i really don't on a practical level 
don't understand how we have like this amount of like rage for a Democrat. Like, cause it's not just like, oh, it's not just, I'm not talking about the people who are like, oh, I hate the Democrat. They're all the same. I don't want to participate in both parties. I'm talking about the people who are like specifically, and you could see them, the shade room blacks. They are, they are like, F- the Democrats, the Democrats ain't do shit for me either. But they are like praising the Republicans. And I cannot, for the love of God, understand what lens you look at or you look at the state of black people and you come to the conclusion that like, the Democrats are the devil, but the Republicans are good or doing something for you. And so I don't know. I say all that to say, I don't know how the fuck I feel anymore. I'm putting it to the room. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hard. So I think it's hard for people to hold two maybe like almost contradictory things in their head at the same time. Um, and I think it's also just, you know, we're reaching a boiling point. We're reaching a situation where things are becoming untenable for a lot of people. So um, that's where like that, that's where contrarianism thrives, right? If the Democratic Party hasn't been working us for so long, then we're gonna have to find some other way. And in that scramble, people start looking in all the wrong places. Yeah, I, uh, I think too. Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, okay, uh, real quick, I was piggybacking off Nicholas, and I think, um, I think. Uh, part of his point uh, was particularly salient to me, and I think it's just the the, the idea that we've been had for so long. Um, I think it's like Democrats have been the default vote for black people, specifically black men, for a very, very long time. And I think when you get the um, veil lifted off your eyes and it's like, oh, I've been scammed this whole time, it can um, create some bitterness. And I think that bitterness is causing us to intentionally want to like, yeah, that ca- capture that contrarian energy, but also just like literally purposely go to the party that's going to hurt the Democrats the most. Like that's what I've seen in my comment section, right? People that are like, not only f- the Democrats, but like, yeah, f- the Democrats, but we're going to do everything we can to now own the libs and smash the leftists. And it's like, they've joined the opposition party just to hurt the Democrat cause the most and i think that's that's the part that's confusing yeah that's spite that's just pure spite because i'm just like who are you spiting i get spite i just don't understand how they've come to the conclusion that they're spiting anybody but themselves like i'm like you can't hurt power you're not gonna hurt the democrats you're not gonna we first of all i think we've shown we did 2016 we've demonstrated that we cannot we're not gonna like you know, upset the Democrats, fight the Democrats, cost the Democrats an election into becoming radically different or being the ones who suffer. That's just not how it works. So I think that's what confuses me, but I'm not going to talk no more other than the only thing I'm questioning I'm going to throw out that I guess I want us to think about because I keep seeing a lot of people be like, we've, Black people like pointing out to me, like what your analysis is missing is that Black men have been like, like losing support, have been, you know, dropping off from the Democratic Party steadily since the 2000s. And I'm like, Yeah, but they're saying that, and I don't know if this is a thing I don't know if I agree with. They're saying it as though it's a reflection of proof that the Democrats don't do anything for us or whatever. And I'm like, I think it's a reflection of maybe some like larger dissatisfaction. I also think they're like more voter disenfranchisement and things that happen to black men um, to like suppress the, you know, depress the black male vote. But I was like, in the same period of time, black women's support for the Democrats has remained, you know, steadily high and black women have been doing way better throughout the 2000s like not just than black men i don't mean that like in society like black women are now the most educated doing the most businesses Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering what is the democratic party what are black men seeing that you know the scales dropping from their eyes that they're deciding that the democrats are doing to them that they're somehow not also doing to black women how are black women being so successful in the same period of time so i guess that's all i've been thinking i I think um and I'm going to speak to like some of the stuff I've heard from friends, people I've known for a long time, stuff my barber says to me when they ask questions about this stuff. And I think it, it there's an overall frustration with the system, lack of appreciation. And I think you can like combine that also, too, with a full uh, like a complete lack of understanding of how this political system actually works, too, because I think as a whole, I don't think black men feel appreciated. I don't think it's a democratic thing. I just think in society. And then when we look at the party that we're supposed to be aligned to, like we're big on like loyalty, respect. So it's like, I'm giving you this, but what are you tangibly giving? Like we, like we, we, we know that we're getting things, but because it's not postmarked as like black, there are some people who don't see it. 
But there are certain things that are going to benefit us, like health care, for example, and forgiving student loans, for example. And I'm very frustrated with I don't both parties, you know what I'm saying? But we can't act like there's not one that's better in terms of what they do domestically. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think I could kind of boil this down to. So the DNC was, was in my city. I'm in the Chicago area and I went to a session to learn. And it was a session about, about reaching black men. And I kind of wanted to see and just kind of hear what they were going to say, because I went in there thinking, OK, they're going to act like they know how to reach us. But they actually had a brother there who was a mayor from a small town in North Carolina who was talking from the perspective of Democrats don't listen. And this is what they need to be understanding. And his main talking point was we don't have a lot of like trusted messengers who communicate these things to us. And we're often uh, we feel disrespected by the way we're communicating things. For example, they'll bring out, you know, celebrity endorsements or they'll have your favorite rapper talking about why you should do this or um, and, and this ain't even really just for us. Like even the white community, they brought out Eminem for y'all. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the insane clown posse, I think, was endorsing <laughs> Kamala too. But like, I think that's an American thing. But we feel mm-hmm. it more because it's either celebrities or nothing for us. And his point was, we want to hear from people we're close to about why this is important or why we should vote. But as a society, do we ever really have those conversations? Think about that. Like, where do we even learn about politics? It ain't in school, really. We learn it. We passing the test. I'm just trying to get out, get this, this A, B, whatever I got to get. And then it's media friends. And now what we didn't have when we were growing up was this, the polarization of social media. Now that frustration is expressed, but not just is it expressed. There are content creators who will feed off that and keep feeding you more of that anger while they profiting and while you suffering. The answer is not to go to the far, far right. To me, the answer is until we get a better system, we got to keep organizing over here. I think that's a good point that we don't have a lot of. uh, um, (laughs) 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 Yeah, I think think to add, I think to add, I think there's a certain level of like political incoherence that exists and i don't and that goes back to the education i I don't know if people understand the difference between different political ideologies i don't think that they necessarily fully understand how the government works at the different levels whether that's local or federal whatever the case may be and i also think people want to be even though they hate this they want to be pandered to and I've been having conversations about this and they're just like, I don't want to be pandered to yet. Yeah, what you're saying to me? Yeah, you yep. do want to be pandered to. Yeah, you you want to be do. specifically <laughs> pandered to. And then if yeah. you don't get specifically pandered to in in the way that you want to, then you're mad. Like, it's really confusing. I think that's one of the biggest things. Right. When Kamala came out with her plan, um, a lot of people were sharing like the little small snippets, but actually it's like a a nine page plan with all these different things. Right. And then I see, saw people say, you know, like, Oh, I don't even smoke weed. Why is this targeted towards black people? And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Okay. So what exactly do you want? Because we know what the implications are of black men and weed and incarceration, right. And mass incarceration, uh, all that stuff. And it's just like, I'm confused to why you're even saying that because this is an attempt And then this other person on the other side of the aisle, Trump and all those people are not even remotely interested in those types of things. And going back to what Obama said, I understood what Obama was saying, but also understood how people got all mad because there is this trend or the situation where everybody seems to be aiming at black men. And I feel like a lot of black men feel targeted and unwanted and all these different things and it it might even well i think it absolutely is related to that whole um uh loneliness loneliness that's going on with men in general and then they they turn to the alt-right pipeline and stuff like that and some of the things i hear from my own friends my associates and stuff like that some of the most right-wing things i've never heard of i don't know what they're looking at i'm confused and i'm like man i've been knowing you for a long time what are you talking about? (laughs) You know? Mm -hmm. And I think these are Mm -hmm. interesting conversations we need to have. We need to have better 
uh, examples or redirect our community to uh, to people that are going to actually help us and not like do what a lot of people are doing. I, I think a lot of people are very vibey, right? They likes they like uh, Trump's vibe. I know that sound. I know, I know. No, they no, they no, like no, Trump's no, vibe. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> sound, you're not crazy. No, you're it doesn't not crazy sound crazy. It does not sound <laughs> crazy. Like you're not mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. um, like I did, a, I did a video recently where I was breaking down my criticisms for every candidate. Right, Trump, Kamala, um, even the libertarian, which is Chase is crazy. I don't know if y'all looked at him. Um, and even the socialist candidates, Claudia and Karina in uh, New York. And just seeing the varied landscape there, for one, I, until I made that video, I had never even looked into anybody who wasn't a Democrat or a Republican. So start there. I think you're right to question the level of education across the landscape. Most of us don't know what the hell is going on beyond the snippets we get on social media, period. We don't even watch mainstream TV. I got, I got a question. So for you guys. the education is absolutely not there. What's up? Oh, uh, so when it comes to Obama, is he our like we don't have a lot of public figures that represent black men as a whole anymore he can really speak to us where we're at is obama the guy is obama our is, is he our representative is he does he represent black men in in the united states of america and then i have a follow-up question about mm. that but is he the guy does he represent us no mm. no not not for me i think a certain like generation maybe I I admire what he accomplished. I admire a lot of what he was what he did, of course, like actually prior to being elected too. Um, I mean, like, and I, I'll take it personal, I'll admit, because his pastor was my father's childhood pastor. Okay. I didn't like the way that was handled. So I'm I'm always gonna have kind of like a mm, <laughs> type yeah. feeling about how he did Jeremiah Wright. Um, but I, I I watched the speech yesterday. I'm always inspired, but I also always differentiate between him like citing you know, uh, Al Green lyrics and Eminem lyrics versus what he actually represents as the American empire. Um, I, I, I keep people where they are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I, I would, I would agree with that. Um, I think Obama has done just as much harm as, uh, most of the presidents you can name. And I think we need to, I think it's, it's tough for us because he's the first, Right. Like he um, he was the first one to punch through. He was the first one with the combination of education and polish and ability to speak that dynamically and ability to inspire us that allowed him to win the presidency. We've never seen anything like it. And so we're 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 leaning towards all the time, like giving him giving him the credit he deserves and giving him the props. But at the same time, American presidents are frequently war criminals. Yeah. And they were probably giving him uh, work. Obama is not really an exception. Yeah, like you can give somebody props like a, like like a black man you know and admire their accomplishments, but we know too much about uh Obama and, and at least in my case to kind of continue to hold him up as like this paragon of virtue like no, he's uh he's a politician and He's a more favorable as far as his personality and his ability to speak and inspire than a lot of other politicians. That does not that does not exclude him from the criticism that he deserves as the commander in chief. Yeah, I think I do think that he had that glow or whatever, uh, you know, for us, you know, he maintained that aura for all eight years. And I don't think that it started to fade until a lot of us started to look back. And, uh, you know, be, because we felt so much pride in what he had accomplished and uh, for what it uh, or what we felt it represented at the time for all of us. Um, he was my introduction to politics in a lot of ways. You know, I was in I was, it was my senior year in college when I could vote for him. We were like I was a minor in African-American studies. We were watching his speeches like as they were happening or the next day and dissecting them and just the feeling like I had the shirts and all of that. And then I started teaching too. And then that was also my introduction to learning about drone strikes. <laughs> I was go. like, Oh, <laughs> and, and, a, and a bunch of, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I was just like, yo, so by 2012, I, I voted for him, but I didn't really feel good about it. You know, 
Um, but and, and I and I wonder too for this generation of folks who are coming up, who is their introduction in terms of like because I had to do a lot of soul searching, reflect, and then also understanding the dynamics of the you know our system of federalism. Um, but but I think that just like you said, Cam, I think he he like he's uh, he, he seemed like personally like a really cool dude. But we know he had a job, and I also bring back some of the criticism because I say I can't expect one person to do it all. Yeah. And that's why I land with Kamala now. It's like the maturity says she's going to be one person. He was one person. This ship has been steering this direction for this long. Mm -hmm. And it might be even dangerous for them to try to, <laughs> you know, go off course a little bit. So I, I, I really struggle with how to judge a president effectively in this system. Oh, I'm talking about, I'm th I, the, I've am i been thinking about that. I was writing a thing literally about that last night because I'm writing a video called, uh, that I'm going to put out the end this month called The Seven Deadly Sins of Black Politicians. And I've been basically writing and starting it all year and stopping and scrapping it and starting over because I keep changing, I guess, like my frame of mind work. And like what I basically came up with is like political purgatory for like black politicians who like, they, they've done things that say that suggest that they're probably heart might be in the right place or that they align in themselves. They believe that they are working on your side and they're progressives and they're trying to navigate. They're maybe try, I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt that they maybe are navigating landscapes. I can't see, like, I can't pretend that I know every area in every political arena, the way that I might know, like a New York city here. But at the same time, while I have evidence of that, I have a lot of evidence of like they're being, being just as doing things that I would, indict another black politician for it right so like in my video yeah. if i have like oh these are the sinners so i had like some examples of that like in a political purgatory i put was like uh the mayor of baltimore someone who i can mm -hmm. see like you can hear in this language i can see other things that he's done that shows like a motivation like he's trying to help the people of baltimore but then on the flip side of that there's cop city that he's behind but then at the same time i'm like i don't know baltimore is a complicated rich history of policing what actual black people think on the ground what the black voters think because I have to keep like the thing I've been reckoning with is that a lot of black people don't agree with me <laughs> like or us like, you know what I mean? The progressive school of thought they don't they don't see the same like being pro policing as in be, being inherently anti black. There's a lot of black voters, especially of the black generation before us, that very much like those politicians we have because they believe those are who we should have. Like not for every yeah. of these like older black people are these like black politicians pulling the wool over their eyes. Like that's what they feel like the community needs. So I'm like, who am I to say? Like, I don't know what's being called on by his church leaders, the black communities there. So I, that's what I've come up with, Ernest. I'm like struggling with that too. Like political purgatory till I figure it out. Like where, like what I think is going on there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's very difficult. I mean, who can meet us where? Shaheen, what do you think about Obama? I was curious about that. Um. I'll be honest, I think this whole thing is like so complicated and so multifaceted that Obama is just a single representation of part of how people feel. I don't look at any personally, I don't look at any politicians as idols because I believe that is a foolish thing to do. Um, considering how they make their money, I, I can't trust it. But I think like the over the overarching problem and I heard it echoed a few times, is around education. Like there has been a lot of misinformation and disinformation spread uh, intentionally targeting like the black male demographic. Uh, I actually was in Milwaukee a few weeks ago uh, doing some stuff around activating voting. Um, and I found out that uh, the Trump campaign is doing targeted ads towards black men in Atlanta, for example. Um, sending out like uh, flyers and uh, things like that, trying to get people to feel swayed I got some. To, yeah. to vote uh, towards the right. And I say that to say that a lot of people don't have the education around like what is and what isn't truth. And I think like while we on this panel, it seems like have a pretty good grasp on the, the, the state of the current political landscape, a lot of people are not there. Um, and similar to what you just said, Ole, I had to realize that a lot of black people just are not like there, like there is not a lot of political education. And I think the problem that the Democrats are facing right now in losing the black, losing the black male vote, because again, like black men vote like very much so in alignment with the Democratic Party is that the systems that Democrats were complicit in creating 
are is eating away at their own populace. And I think that is evident in like the school to prison pipeline, for example, uh, prioritizing certain factions of policy over others. And I think it's just like, yeah, they kind of screwed themselves. And yeah. I think like having a more left-leaning politic makes it hard to look at these problems and to kind of like feel uh, any sympathy towards the Democratic Party for that. But I do believe like there is a difference between Trump, Lord Jesus, and <laughs> Kamala. I think, uh, you know, the president is going to be a cop either way. It's just a matter of like how bad you want to be, uh, how bad you want your p- police brutality to be at this point. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's, that's it. Is there anyone? Um, that's the American Empire, man. Is, is there anyone that you guys do see? Is is there anyone who does speak for us? Because that's I think that's part of the problem is we don't have um somebody to rally around as black men currently. I think uh there's a lot of so, desperate so figures out there, there you know, just that. kind of spread like out. Like leaders, yeah, leaders, thought leaders, cultural leaders, yeah. Um, there's like a smatter that's a hundred percent that's a hundred percent true because you know back during the civil rights era and stuff like that we had all types of leaders um we don't have stuff like that (laughs) anymore i I don't even know where to begin with that one i was about to say i feel like i'm gonna let shaheem talk i feel like we're probably on the same page in my soul (laughs) i'll probably like i'm probably it's probably gonna be taken in the wrong way i hope it's not (laughs) but black men similar to all men in this country in general, have been so inducted into the manosphere the, the, uh, the, where a lot of the representation is, I think of the Kevin, Kevin Samuels of the world who yeah. uh, take advantage of male loneliness, which is like definitely an epidemic happening here, um, and like constantly feed into this idea that women are the blame. Again, I said this is such a complicated and multifaceted issue. I think a large part of why a lot of Black men immediately feel reprehensive towards Kamala, even though we all agree there is a lack of education across the board, is simply because a lot of Black men hate Black women. And I know, I know, it might not be like uh, blatant hate, it might not be outright hate, but I believe like culturally, like we have a problem in our, our culture as Black people where especially here where black women are constantly degraded and put down. I think a lot of the reasons why uh, somebody mentioned spite towards the the Democrats, which is why people are like going in the opposite direction. I think it's deeper than that. I think it might be spite towards black women and how black women like typically lean politically because a lot of men are conditioned to blame women for their, their problems and the things that they lack specifically black women, because those are the closest women to them in proximity. Um, and I know it's, to me, it's a cultural thing. And it's also so many other, cause don't take this too far out of context. It's so many different layers to it because there are different people who are coming to the same conclusions for different reasons. Like there are still black men who believe that we are the original Hebrew Israelites. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of them. There are um, a lot. There <laughs> are black men who are like extreme, extremely left um, or I don't say extreme, like they lean more to the left and they're able to take a step back and analyze that a lot of these systems are just f***ed and the way that the country works in general is just like exploitive and anti-black. And then there are people who just like feed into conspiratorial thinking that think like, you know, P. Diddy is running the government or some shit. Like, I think there's so many layers, but she knows often across the exactly <laughs> often across the board, especially with black men, it is a deep hatred for black women. Um, and that's you, just me. You, I agree. What, how, that what do you is, that mean is exactly so... though? But, but like, can we break down the nuance of that though in terms of hate? Because hate can be viewed a few different ways, I feel like. Because there's a hate that white races have for us. And because I, I get what you're saying, but like, can you break that down a little bit more in terms of like hate? Is it like, I can't stand this? You know what I'm saying? I, I, or is it- I, I feel like I got to answer this one as, as the woman here. I feel no, like that's the issue too. Like, I think that what I found crazy about the discussions about black women and black men in this election, right? It's like on one hand, I felt very like, I've gone out of my way like every time to be very sensitive 
to like how the black man perceives things and how I talk about things. You know, even though I can see and I've lived my life as a black woman and I experience and know the vitriol that is had for black women. It is a, it is a lived experience and how we're perceived all this, all yada, yada, yada. And yet, like, I see that I, I feel the, the need to like discuss it in this way. And like and I've seen like black women trying to discuss it in a way, like trying to be like sensitive to that. And there's a flip side to the way that black women are regularly discussed. And I think it's important to like point out people think of it's like when you try to explain to like white people about racism and white privilege and microaggressions and the fact that you can do these things and these can be racist and these can be harmful without you waking up and consciously deciding I am racist I think black people are inferior but you were raised and indoctrinated indoctrinated around in a society that ingrains that notion and things so you are going to implicitly and unintentionally like uh 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 conduct yourself and do things that are racist, right? Regardless of like who you are in your spirit. And it's the same thing when it comes to sexism and patriarchy. Like this is a patriarchal society. Like it's yeah. not, I feel like so many men, particularly I'm, I'm not saying black men because of the majority, I'm saying black men because that's who I'm in community with, you know, um, that, that take offense. Like the way I saw so many black men jumping down, like angry, like it has nothing to do with sexism. Black men aren't sexist. Like they're not in the same breath, calling Kamala every kind of bitch, refusing to say her name. There's yeah. a certain level yeah. to which they're like slut shaming her. They're, you know, like denigrating her. I'm like, it, it, it's, it's evident and it's present. And I'm like, when you think about, hey, the existence of the manosphere in and of itself, right? I don't, I don't think we, when I think of the manosphere, I like, I very often sometimes like think of like, these bunch of like white incels, all right? Like that's who I think like in my picture. But when I think of who the actual Manosphere leaders are, they're Kevin Samuels, they're Andrew Tate, whose daddy is black. It's fresh and fit. Those are the, yep. you know what I mean? And like, you look at like where the shade room, like I think about how many black people were like upset that like Kamala was even going to the shade room. But the reality is a lot of black people, if not the majority of black people between a different like a teenage to like 30 something age demographic are getting their news from the shade room. And if you go yep. look at the culture of those comments in that community and see how they talk about and think about black women is, is crazy to me. We can look at who the majority of black media, both mainstream and independent, and look at how they talk about and think about and treat black women and even their lives like beyond just like on media. So I, I think like that's that's like what we mean the hate the hate is not like in the conscious way that you like wake up and you say I hate women or that I don't want to be with a woman but it's the way that you you uh you judge and pick apart and you feel like like a visceral you get a reaction out of the idea that a woman might even be in a spot that a woman might get a thing you know what I mean like yeah, yeah. the leadership I, yeah. Yeah. role and the gender okay, I think okay. that's all right. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. like like the hierarchy yeah. thing yeah. like oh not to get conspiratorial <laughs> but I do think that and not no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, do it. Uh, <laughs> go, it's go a ahead. part of the plan, right? It's days. divide and conquer, right? If 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 black men can't get to the point where they can stand side by side with black women and they're being fed all of this stuff to 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 make that divide further and further and further, we're never going to be looking in the right direction. And there are so many other versions of that. There are so many other ways that we're being pitted exactly. against each other, so that we all can't collectivize and look in the right direction. I think there are so many other versions of that that, that you know, that pit uh, poor people against each other, that uh, pit uh, races against each other, age groups against each other. Um, this, there's a gender war, you know, that goes beyond black people, obviously, um, even though those top names like uh, Fresh and Fit and and uh, and Andrew Tate and uh, I mean, they are black people, but Andrew Tate's fan base isn't primarily black. I'll tell you that much. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. that, yep. The gender divide, the, the gender divide has a has a has a wider appeal, and the, and I mean the the reason I think it works so well is because um, there's a lot. You know, you you hear all this stuff being blamed on the patriarchy, and then you take it personally as a man without recognizing that the patriarchy is also what's hurting you. That not enough emphasis or. Uh, yeah. Right. Not enough emphasis is put on the idea yeah. that like, look, here's 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 the patriarchy. Here's how it works. And here's how it hurts you directly as a man. This is why you should also not like this thing. Um, instead, yeah, the yeah, people get in their feelings and think everything is a personal attack on their manhood. I, right. I, I think, you know, something I've, uh, I've been thinking about and I feel like Cam and Jay Sean and your comments like made me 
um, remember a, a comment I read from a, a black thinker. I can't remember. She, I think she deleted. I went to go search for the post, um, but she posted it like around the Obama time. And I thought it was interesting because she talked about like how much energy and work like is being spent to pander to black men this election and how that's like being called for, right? Like Jay Sean's being, that is being demanded. Like, and to what Ernest said earlier, it's just the idea that like if black, if things can be done that help black people, but if it's not marked black man, it's not for the black man. And I don't know really how to reconcile that. If like you dismiss what the, isn't marked black man, but you also, if it's marked black man, it's pandering. It's pandering. Um, and which would, but what she pointed out was the fact that here is this election where you get like, it's the first black woman president and this should be historical and you're not even allowed to center that. Like we're not expected, she's not expected to have a, a plan for black women. Nothing says black women on it. No one has come up with any plan for black women. You don't hear anybody talking about black maternal uh, health care, the fact that we're dying no. more in hospitals or any of the things like that really affect us and are real things happening, but we are expected, demanded everywhere, black outlet, mainstream, independent. And I'm like, I'm guilty of it too. Like reading what she said is like, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I feel a certain sense of Jesus. Why do people call me? Um, <laughs> I'm feeling a certain sense of having to like, how can I, I like, I'm always trying to be extra sensitive and like thoughtful about how I talk to and about black men versus like, not only am I not having to do the same for black women and I'm not expected to, but I would be chewed out if I did, like even down to how I conduct, like when I was reading this and I'm talking about the indictment, I was like, shit, that's not, not true. Like I have like Ole and friends, I've done multiple, like only black men and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like I have to do that because the way it's received that there's even, you know what, I, if I have four bl black women to two black men, that is like black men are in the comments up and outrage. I always do three black women, three black men, if it's not, a, you know what I mean? And then you'll have black men and then they'll say, that's not the black man that represents them. If they're not black men that are like spewing a traditional kind of like toxic masculinity, then they say those are not the black men. So it's very like, not only does it feel impossible, but there is a level of like, I'm like, yeah, there's an inherent misogyny and sexism them, and even how we're like dealing with this election and how we're like think about it like when is the black first black man is the first black man president yada 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 like no one has ever expected no black women have never been centered you know and even the idea still that, now so i'm just like the idea that, that's, that, a, that's a great point because i just saw the, recently that was a post uh where it was latino men and families she made one recently about that as well also you know before that black men and I'm just like, no, you're totally right. There's an expectation that these minority men get centered. And then I guess like, oh, if women are being centered, it's centered around like, you know, abortion rights and and things related to that. And it's just right. almost like a throwaway. But there is an emphasis on that because I think it's ex maybe there's an expectation or something like that where. Um, there is that disconnect with black and Latino men that you have to convince them that you as a woman are going to help them because they like almost inherently believe that you're not going to. I'm not saying all black men or all Latino no, men. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I think there is this thing yeah. where they think like, oh, I need to specifically pander to them because they have told me that I need to pander to them specifically to, to get something. What are you specifically doing for me? And it, it's debatable if the thing that you say actually is going to work or not, uh, whatever you might no, say. A, you know? it's, a latent, it's a latent thing with us yeah. where all, I think all minority males, it's a latent thing where it's like, if you center women, then you are the opposition. Uh, I, don't think, mm. I don't think Kamala could center women and win this election. And I think Kamala is very, very aware of what she can and can't do to close out this final stretch of the of the election. That's why she waffles on questions in interviews. She cannot take a stance like that. She will lose. Like she, yeah. like she's very hyper aware of what each how each stance would affect her chances of of finishing out this stretch without alienating a certain sect of the population. Yeah. She is a politician, and she's a good one. Um, and her team is aware of how these things usually go. So there is no world where she's going to put up a flag and be like, yeah, I'm a black woman. The only reason she's even mentioned it is because Trump is like she turned black all of a sudden. Uh, she had no choice but to address it because he's being f ridiculous. But it, even if he wasn't, yeah, there is no world, at least not yet, at least not in America's current makeup where she could be like, I'm a black woman. These are the things that are important to black women. We need to address this directly. No, she would prefer to go on, call her daddy, the white 
po- podcast and talk about reproductive rights to all women right. at right. once as Doesn't? opposed to prioritizing black women. Is that so that I'm glad that we got to that point because I think it it speaks to one political reality, but also how unchanged that political reality and is a way that I think is going to upset us again, like the way Kamala set up a failure, right? Because I remember when Obama was in office and I remember even my daddy like explaining to me why Obama has to do things more for like maybe the LGBT community, but he can't do things for black people in the same way because it's perceived as this and this is the next thing, right? Like I recall it and it's not untrue, right? Like it's, it's not true. untrue. It wasn't untrue. Like it wasn't untrue. And I also don't like, by the way, the way this idea that like Obama is explicitly a failure for the purposes of not ha- like have, having done things that benefited other marginalized yeah, communities is a very sen- st- like selfish and anti-liberation type argument that is ridiculous to me. Like, but anyway, yeah. like uh, but not all Ab- all Obama critiques were standing. Um, but like not for nothing. In the same way that was the case in twenty eight uh, in two thousand and eight, two thousand and twelve. Here we are with Kamala, knowing, recognizing that she can't advocate for black women. You know what I mean? She can't advocate for black women. And we know no. that, and she can't even do that and maintain like a certain amount of black support, let alone other support. Yep. So like that, I think that like that really to me illuminates like a political reality that I think we struggle to like accept as progressives. Like the fact that America's elect, America's populace and America, like the American populations and America's voting public and stuff are not as progressive as you would like. And and, like, they're not, they're, they're absolutely not. Like, I don't know what that means. Shaheem, you go. I'm sorry. I just like, okay. So one, I will say, I don't know exactly what Barack Obama did for the LGBTQ community. He came into office not even believing in same-sex marriage. So that's one. Uh, the Supreme Court like ruled for same-sex marriage, and that is like a white LGBTQ issue. So I'm not even going to touch on that too much because I give a about marriage when the majority of homeless youth are LGBTQ Black youth. Okay, that's one. Uh, but two, I think the strange thing happens when there's uh, an oppress- oppressed identity intersecting with a privileged identity. And this is the part where I'm... I like have tried to find so many different ways to say this gently. Um, no matter how gently I say it, though, it's still received the same way. But I say this as someone, I'm a queer Black person, like, but still, I'm a male. Like At the end of the day, I acknowledge like that I have privilege because I am male in a patriarchal society. Um, a lot of people who have an oppressed identity, like being Black, and a privileged identity, like being a man, have a hard time like acknowledging the privileged part of their identity. And that creates this Mm. victim complex that kicks into overdrive. Anytime someone that they hold privilege over gets any semblance of power um, or equality before equality before them. It seems like it shouldn't be that hard. All of our oppressions are interwoven and interconnected. It seems like it shouldn't be that hard to illustrate to somebody. My my main point though. I thought you were, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I just think it's absurd. It's because they're being delayed, Nicholas. That we're that we're trying to explain. um, It should be simple to explain to somebody um, that the idea that a black woman should have to minimize herself and a whole less space for a black man is absurd. It's like that. Like that. That the the fact that um, that she's gonna put her rights and her needs on the back burner. So that I will feel more comfortable is ridiculous. Um, that like we need a way to illustrate to people that that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Um, like you were saying about privilege, uh, I, I wish that because th- that argument about Barack Obama and not doing anything for black people. That's going to happen all over again. That's going to be a whole other um, nuanced argument that people aren't ready to have about Kamala Harris. And we just started kind of opening that can of worms right now. Um, That's kind of why I was talking about we need a person uh, who can meet us where we're at as black men because we need somebody to explain the absurdity to that to the average black man, I think. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Mm. I, I think you're right. I, I was I forgot about this point. I thought about it earlier when y'all were talking about it. 
I think a niche, another issue, like, cause y'all are right. Like in the, in, in the past, like in the civil rights movement and stuff, there were lots of leaders. Right. But what I think is the difference uh, today, if you think of who the people were that were considered leaders and like, they weren't just like the activists, they're the writers, they're the, this, you know what I mean? They're all, they're all the James Baldwin, all of these, all of those people, like the variations, the generation of who are those people in this present world exist, but they exist in a world where then an entirely different landscape than existed then. One where everybody is online, where everyone is trying to have a platform and more importantly, everybody is trying to tear down those platforms. And it's like before you always had the infighting in the civil rights movement and all these people and, pe and them trying to critique each other and other people trying to do it, but it tra didn't travel at the same rate that it can travel now. You know what I mean? Like there's a certain mm -hmm. way people spend their time actively trying to bring and other people within the movement on their side, other black people spent all their time trying to cast doubt on everybody that is trying to be a thought leader or trying to do that work. So I think it is much harder for black people black men to have a leader because who can they trust when every single person like i'm sure all of us even it's just regular on a much lesser scale as thought leaders or whatever in our spaces can can show you the anti-movement saying that we're we're shills and we're the enemy and we're the op and the blah 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 100%. blah blah like i could 100%. see it i could point to them right now i'm I, like yeah. i i see that so it's like i think that's the difficulty right like imagine if like Imagine if MLK did I have a dream and this was on Twitter by the thousands, like, <laughs> look at this broad ass <laughs> and it's not yeah. violent, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah, democratic <laughs> chill. You over there shilling. Right. <laughs> look at fing him with this non peaceful shit. Of course Lyndon they let him go be there with the march on Washington because white people like it. That's how you know the establishment is fine with it. Right, right. You, you, know you, what you I mean? Like, it, that's what would be happening. That, you, you're speaking on something that I think about all the time. I talk to some of my friends about and this might sound crazy, I don't know, but sometimes I'm like, the internet was a mistake. <laughs> the internet was a mistake. Social media was a mistake. I get on yeah. social media and I immediately am like, what the f is this? Bro, don't even get me I started my Twitter. on Twitter. I just, oh, I just did the same thing. I had I to. My Twitter. I, I, I took some to. screenshots because I'm going to make a video about how Elon has turned it into a racist, a racist oh, wasteland. 100%. But then I deleted my account because, yeah, to your point, social media has not only created a rise of contrarians, it's also created a rise of just a simple fact that you can monetize being a contrarian now yeah so like uh and and, uh, and to be fair to be completely fair it started with people monetizing being pro-black in general like yeah. the blue checks when the blue checks started happening and the blue check black people on twitter started having their rise in audiences and you i don't know if y'all noticed but there be it became a thing where people who constantly talk about civil rights were getting speaking engagements they were getting like endorsements on the side they were getting brand deals etc cetera, etc cetera. and once it becomes a business to be loudly pro-black then you have to go looking for things to complain about mm -hmm. and that's when it started it started there and then the contrarians to those people they also rose up and now everybody who amasses a certain level of audience we've all amassed a certain level of audience has the ability to monetize their random thoughts. And so I don't, I think if we're at the point of no return, you know, to Jay Sean's point, there is no going back. Like we should just stop entertaining that notion altogether. The technology just does not go backwards. So we've yeah. reached the point where we're permanently in this space where no matter what you're doing, no matter how much good you're doing, there's a YouTuber that's looking in the way for you to mess up so they can make a video on you. There's journalists like, analyzing your background to see if they can do an expose before that YouTuber even gets to it. <laughs> We're permanently in a space where there are no leaders because all the leaders are just, they have a mob around them waiting to monetize their failures. A oh, thousand percent. Can, can, I, can I add, a, oh, can I get in my historical bag real quick? And, yeah. And you then Shaheem, him. I think you was about to make a point too about something that you say that make people angry. I want to hear that. Um, but I got to get in my history bag first. Um, mm. I think too, one of the big differences is when MLK and all of them was doing their thing, like, TVs were just starting to become common in everybody's house. So like the distractions were that people, what were we doing for fun? Reading books, like going outside, you know what I'm saying? Double Dutch, playing jacks and dominoes and stuff like that. Having face-to-face -face yeah. conversations, actually having to sit down and read something and digest. And in those conversations we have now publicly, we're kept inside. You know, one of the things that I feel like every content creator, really, really anybody on social media should have is a group chat of people that you can dump stuff to you know mm -hmm. like when you did when you when you frustrated about something or you might be about to make a post or you got a visceral reaction it's like say it there first 
And like, <laughs> yeah. what, what y'all think about that? You know, oh, bro, no, don't. You know what I'm that's saying? Like, <laughs> like, wait a couple of days. Wait a couple <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, because for real, like, when, when I don't want to say specifically, but like, when, when certain presidential people, life's in danger, and I was like, oh, I wanted to, like, really say some, but I'm like, no, <laughs> let me just, let me just keep that in the group <laughs> chat, because that probably ain't good. But, like, so, <laughs> so it's kind of like what y'all said about, the difference between then, I would always tell my students when I was a teacher, like, yo, do y'all think y'all could really abstain from doing riding the bus for a year and so in a couple days, de- like in a week or so, like they did back then in carpool and do they, all this stuff? They'd and, fold in a week. They'd fold bro, in a week. And they was passing out flyers hand to hand and people yeah. were showing up. And we got this. We got all of this. And we struggle yeah. with that. So I think to your, po- your question, Nicholas, I think that the leaders honestly are in pockets now. I think every region probably has that. And I think, I don't think, I think we're better off with that. Like one person we view as the person. And even then MLK yeah. was not universally loved. Like we say he mm-hmm. was. Um, but even if that person gets elevated in our society today, like y'all said, we're going to tear him down. Oh, he getting paid yeah. off. He a shell. He this, he that. And and I steer clear of even elevating politicians to that because I yeah. think your, your main focus is again, maintaining the empire and, and not helping people. So like, I, mm-hmm. I, again, I compartmentalize. You're here. I need you for this. But I look at people in my community that are doing the work. And honestly, I look at y'all as the leaders too, because I think that, again, not having, like we do some of, we make a living off of this, but we don't operate off of the same things as other people do. Um, mm-hmm. As somebody who's getting paid to, of course, they got to get their extra term. And to my last point, like I think Corey Bush is an example of, what it means to be a politician and really try to hold on to that morality and, and, and being for the people. And they ran a whole campaign against her up for another Democrat. Right. Quote yeah. unquote, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah. they were just talking about that in the last episode. Leah Goodridge, who's a big housing attorney in New York City, was talking about like how like and I didn't even realize this and I'm in New York City plugged in. But like Yusuf Salam, you know, one of the exonerated five won a seat, which I was really excited about. What I didn't realize was that he replaced another like a a progressive who had been very much so working for the people in Harlem to like prevent these these affordable buildings that were not actually affordable or even like family places that people in Harlem could actually and so she gets pushed out by the Democrats and I don't even realize it because sometimes what they do is they they replace them with a black person you might like and you don't even if you're not plugged in you don't know and 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 the thing is I think you're right right that like we are in pockets and sometimes I think even with that we don't have enough of us because what at least in particular roles I think we're in pockets where we we have black people in every single region doing amazing shit on the ground, like organizers, activists, like lawyers and people doing amazing dope shit. What is we don't have a lot of messengers to the to the public, to black the black community. I wouldn't even say leaders, but we don't have a lot of messengers. You're right. Trusted messengers. And we also don't have a, a lot of people, I think, with that power trying to make more because something I realized like maybe four years ago, I've said this a lot of times is my like kind of ethos for probably even why Ole and Friends exist is my mentor, Messiah Lord, who's a black male lawyer, said to me, pointed it out to me in like 2020 when I first started Apparent Media. He was like, you notice there are never a lot of black male progressives like in these spaces at all. Like he was like, think about it. There are not any. And like because he pointed that out to me and he insisted it to me because I might not have noticed because I know a shit ton of black progressives in real life, obviously. And like people who I know I see doing the work like I can find a million like that. I like have to go and find, you know. But when he said that and I like noticed over the four years, like, OK. He's right. I don't see many on the media. And then I looked at even in like independent media. I noticed at first, like, oh, shit, I had to think about this. Like when I made the original list, like how I even came to know about Cam or Nick. Actually, you're all people except for like Shaheem. I, and I already followed each other. Jay Sean is my friend in real life. But everyone else I found because I went and like asked, like I went to FD one day, like FD, who are the black men that you think are doing dope content or whatever and stuff like you and our good voices that like we should know about more. And he was like, Cam and Nicholas. And I was like, OK, cool. Right on my list. And my boyfriend was like, oh, Ernest, like love him, like all every time. And so that was how I knew. But I recognize like if I had to think off the top of my dome, black women and black media people and thinkers like I had a million, but I didn't have the same for black progressive voices. And so I think that's also something is like us having to make a conscious effort to be like, we have to create an opportunity for there to be more messengers of us that survive and like point them out to people. Because there is a truth that Mm -hmm. even with the mediums that we have, even though we have the benefit I think of living in a time where we could reach people more like faster. Like you said, the, the Black Panthers and them are whole passing out things by hand. They are getting people to show up at a thousands community. That's a different kind of thing and and much harder. 
to do with the problem is we're still competing against algorithms that suppress polit political content, which is anything our black asses have to say. Like we have algorithms that literally don't re recognize us unless we like put ourselves, we literally manufacture like a pocket for us on YouTube and like Cornbread too, where it says, okay, Shaheem was on, Cam James was on, uh, on, on Olay and Friends. Okay, so Olernati like users will like that and Cam James and then they start showing us to each other like that. So I think there is like, I do think it has to be incumbent on us in, in these spaces to say like, okay, what is, what is this? I have to learn this on a more technical level and how do I expand and make more of these? Because something I find very often when people come to me to like uplift things and I'm like, I can't do what I do in, for New York City everywhere. Like even if I could do it, even if I weren't one person, I'm not qualified to do it. Like I don't, yeah. I can't, like I, I can't act like I know Chicago and, and Baltimore and all these places the way that I know where I'm at, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I think it's like, every time I'll ask people, they'll come to me and I'll be like, who's your me? You know what I mean? In your area. And they're like, there isn't one. They have a lot of them doing the work, you know what I mean? Doing all the real work, bringing it to data. But as far as the messenger who's going to amplify it. So I think that's what we have to like do more, like try to find them. Cause I don't think we're going to get a world like where we have a leader that everybody agrees on and doesn't trust. Like, I don't even think we could get like a group of them. We could get them to agree to, you know what I mean? Like think about mm -hmm. how the squad gets done. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't even think we yeah. could get that. So I think mm -hmm. we have to like, be like, all right, how do we create messengers for like everywhere? Because I think if we had like a person, like we had us everywhere, you know what I mean? With platforms, I think we could do a lot better in counteracting a lot of these like misinformation and all this lack of political yeah. education that's getting to the forefront. If we had a smart version instead of the shade room, if we had an anti, like, you know what I mean? Mm. The opposite of that, yeah. that at least exists. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not even saying the shade room has to go, but like, at least, you know what I mean? Have another vehicle there. I think we'd be in better shape than we are now. I think yeah. looking at the incentives though, um, is probably the most crucial aspect here is what are the incentives in place that would even allow them to exist because there's more incentives on the monetization side, the sponsorship side for misinformation, for um, loosely researched content that just draws in a lot of engagement, which is the shade room in a nutshell. Um, it's like, how are we going to create those people? Um, how are we going to elevate those people and give them a way to survive while doing so? You know what I'm saying? It's different. Of course, it's different standards from the leaders we used to have, how did MLK get by, right? He was a preacher and he, I'm sure got, you know, community funding to do a lot of the work he did on the ground. But what, what is that, what is that model transferred to 2024? You need sponsorship deals. You need a Patreon. You need, you know, that crowdfunding support, but let's just think about YouTube. Let's think about how we all got to where we are on our various platforms you have to be giving people a level of certain level of entertainment, right? For them to decide to invest in you, to lift you up, to fund your, um, your, the good that you're doing outside of this platform. And quite frankly, a lot of this stuff is bleak and not entertaining. And if you don't have the, the skills to pair with it, to be like, Oh, this is an entertaining show. And I'm talking about some real shit. Then, they will leave you. They will leave you in the dust. They will stop supporting you. They will let you fall and move on to the next person that has a little bit more shiny of a presentation. So I think that's the reality we're living in. Yeah. And, you know, how do you conquer that? I used yeah. to, um, I would get questions because, like, I started content creating when I was a teacher, um, primarily to fight for justice for myself. And then it began to think where it was for everybody else. And, kids would start to see my content. I had a kid one time, we had a black student union and she asked me like, how do I become an activist like you? And I didn't even know how to respond to that. It was like, what do you mean? Like, because it's not like a job, you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. <laughs> like you, you looking at it cause you see me, people might want to interview me because it is. So they might want, but it's not, that's, that just comes with it. Sometimes it's not what you're doing it for, you know? And I think there's like some people get taken back because they think so the perfect example of this cam too is like, on Instagram, when you create content, they got rid of it now, but you used to be able to categorize your content. They didn't have one thing for education. It was yeah. like teaching methods. We ain't even supposed yeah. to be in this space. <laughs> like they don't even want to categorize it. It's a, it was like a million things for animals and food, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I mean, one of the things I would tell people when they ask me that is like, well, become a teacher then. That's what I did. I can't speak to nothing else. Get a job, <laughs> get a job helping yeah. people. And, and like you can't you can't like start just creating content and it's like, yeah, this is the thing. But you don't have a lived experience to even speak from. 
it means yeah. something real when you actually been doing something what whatever the job is in, in terms of yeah. like you you know you working for amazon organizing like you know what i'm saying it, it got to be something and and i think again that goes back to, to kamala something she even mentioned for black man is like we need to increase more of us in the classroom you know whether mm-hmm. it be teaching or just like let's just volunteer the local school you know what I'm saying? Just just be there for the kids. And I think for me, a passion of mine, too, is like I, I really feel a certain way about the way that we we uh, recruit our young kids to be these to be athletes. Man, we selling them a pipe dream. You know, we it, there are 300 some spots in the NBA, you know, like and, and they picking 60 people a year. 30 going to get cut within a couple of years. The other 30 from the first round cut that in half, they probably ain't going to make it. They're going to be overseas. Same thing with football. We killing our kids' brains, selling them the dream of them being millionaires. But again, to your point, the dangling carrot is I could be a millionaire. With yeah. content creation, like we, we don't have people that are saying that kid right there could be the next fill in the blank, a politician or somebody who stands up. And I think that we have to be more intentional about me being a grassroots person is what can we do with our local schools to say, who are those kids who are on a debate team, for example, who are, I did a black suit in union. Y'all already know the demographics. We had 30 yeah. kids. How many was men? How many was young men? Mm. <laughs> but I they, think, maybe three, um, maybe three yeah, consistent nine, ones. <laughs> yep. I think some of this stuff you got to try to make like so cool awesome. again. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just think some there's some okay. stuff you got to try and make cool culturally. Like uh, one the thing I will give the Democrats credit, credit for is that this year, you know, they were a little more aggressive and just calling Republicans weird. And I think that did kind of put out a vibe that like, yeah, yeah, they just do get into some weird shit. They make everybody uncomfortable. It made being a Republican uncool. Yep. One thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately um, in the 90s, um, you know, when gangster rap was popping off and stuff, there was a lot of um, uh, there was a lot of stuff in their raps that made stuff that I mean, it didn't last, but the stuff like. Wearing a condom, having safe sex, they would talk about it so much and they would do it in a way that made it sound cool like something that you wanted to do. Like, if you weren't wearing a condom, you were a f- loser. Mm. Um, we just need, yeah. we need that. We need that, that we need to re- return that attitude of the truth is cool. Knowing what the f- you're talking about is cool. Um, being informed, that's the way you want to move around in the world. If you don't know what the f- is going on, you're kind of f- whack. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'm trying. Hey, I'm you, hey, you know what else we did, bro? We made guess who? Guess what else we made cool up until 2015? Donald Trump. <laughs> y'all remember? Yeah, yeah, y'all remember our true. favorite rappers? Just like, hey, oh my God. Like, yes. just like, he well, was he probably just, he just had money. And they're still doing that. And we still have have mad black rappers like popping up like all the time doing it. Like that that's something I felt like because I've 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 been on receiving end of this like having this argument with other black women like all election season and I think they finally started to wear me down. Like at first, like last year, I was very like, Okay, this argument is like unreasonable, this attack on black men, yada yada yada, black men vote Democrat yet XYZ. But I'm like, I would and I and I know that they intentionally highlight these people more. But I was like, God damn, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a shit. T-. Like, I feel like every time I see a black person come out every other fucking day, they are especially like these Lord Jamars, these black male rappers. They're saying crazy shit. And like, yeah, we dismiss it so much because we want to keep them and we want to like downplay the impact. But I'm like, I don't know why we keep acting like every like all our like black male rappers and people that we love in the community and we act like a leader is coming out and spewing this ignorant shit has no impact and i think the worst shittiest part about it is like you're right that it's a lack of like they're not informed they don't know what they're talking about like if you look at a lord jamar lord jamar has been going on he didn't just go on godfrey's podcast spewing a bunch of stupid shit um about the election the world he's a flat earth all kind of nut shit he went on paris morgan and he did the same thing but if you look it up lord jamar don't vote and like yeah. people might think of that as a reason why you should dismiss him, but it's also a it's also a thing that should upset you. Like these people who do not vote, who are who have never voted, who are like not engaged, they don't know about this process, but they jump up to tell you like you shouldn't vote for Kamala. I hate her. He's calling Kamala a bitch, and then it and, right. and then it makes you sit down like an Obama and be like, why? What is the what? What's the why? Why a person who has never voted, who is not politically engaged, just jumping up to shit on Kamala and say, "Oh, don't vote, don't for, don't vote for Kamala." And I think that's my my frustrating part is not that like black men feel that like oh they people have been done for them and the Democrats. It's like when you ask a lot of the people who are saying that, the specific ones saying that, tell me more. What didn't they do for you? What did you want them? And they've got nothing. They don't know nothing about what has happened. And I think oh, that's bye. something that. 
that's blowing me. No, nah, real talk. Like, bro, who called me a Democratic shield the other day. And I just, I, I just, sometimes I, I don't like to feed into it, but sometimes you make time for it. Because it was 99% every comment was good. I'm like, this dude said, what? So I said, I said, I said, what's the yeah. shield, bro? He said, people who pander to the... And I clicked on this page, dude from, from Nashville. So I say, bro, you understand that a Democrat, LBJ, you know, I don't give him too much credit. I mean, Dr. King and them was forcing it, but he signed something that desegregated nationally, like your city, for example. But the, mm. I mean, I'm not even on the state make, make, made some mistakes and all that. I get it. But like, how are you this? Like, it's just, it's just these empty names that don't even mean anything, bro. <laughs> like, what does it mean to be a, we talking common sense, bro. Like, and a lot of these people parroting these things, they might not even be impacted directly. You good economically, but a lot of it could be, we, like, some of us might be voted for our, our grandparents, our parents, the people on the yeah. street, our kids. That makes me think, like, if my boyfriend is not on a work call, he has to tell y'all a story. He'd be dying to tell everybody the other day. My boyfriend went to go, um, let me, hold on, hold on. CJ, I need you to come tell the slavery story. Oh, not the slaves. <laughs> that don't, the sound, that don't oh, sound. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh like, y'all, y'all need to hear, like, I'm telling you, I'm having some crazy conversations with, like, black men I know offshoot in real life. Like, not my black, like, like closest friends. Like, Jay Sean and I are like, this is nuts. But I'd be lying if I said I don't see the rise in this, like, rhetoric. Like, I'm, I'm actually yeah. interested to see what the how black men vote this election. Because, honestly, the way it's been given, I was like, this, this seems like, then we might be at the point where the problem is real. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, you know, when, like, I was like, okay, the, the, the supporter has been dropping off every other election. We do see, you know, I, I think it's still negligible to everybody else. We do see more black men going over the right and stuff like that. But I'm like, I'm not going to hold you. I'm 31 years old. I, I've never seen this amount of like black men out here on just right wing propaganda. And I'm like, and I understand, I'm not confused as to where it happened. It happened because people don't look at all these like manosphere, all the shade room. They don't see those things as political, but they are because to what Cam said earlier, People don't just receive politics from us or education from us. We have to make it entertainment. It's like, like there's so much about like everybody wants to receive their shit as entertainment. They don't want to receive it as traditional politics. Like if you even go look, like whenever I'm making an Illuminati production, I'm getting this research. It's all readily available. All the reporters have made it visible. The yep. videos are there. You can see these politicians saying it has barely any views. No one's reading it. No one's engaging. They yep. only like receive what you give to them in this entertainment world. So like, what people are getting all year from all this trad wife content on TikTok, from all this, like all these people that they're consuming is right wing thought process, right wing ideology. It's not being expressed to them as though it's political because that's how you get them to digest it. So it's not confusing to me that for the last four years, I've seen this massive burst in all those figures online and those kinds of uh, Internet spaces. And now we have a bunch of black people who watch that shit saying right wing shit that they like wouldn't have said. And it's very hard to like tackle something in the middle of election season that has gone unaddressed for what it is you know what i mean in the last however many years but i think shit uh -huh. is i think i think we might like I, I i'm like i don't know i don't know if it's gonna be this election where i have to say i have to stop saying that the black male republican is a negligible like myth that they're running on with but i'm like no, no, it's real. Hey, i've been I, I having some real. crazy convos Just there's 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 two things i know we are not gonna go throughout this conversation without talking about that whole uh Kamala, if she wants to do something for me, you know what she need to do? She need to do child support forgiveness. <sighs> oh, I saw that. Did see that? I heard about it, it, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it. I just kind of ran from my phone. <laughs> I, I didn't see that. I heard I saw about that it. And I kept seeing it, and I'm like, I cannot I believe thought. this. And I'm like, it's, we talked about it, Ole. We talked about how that's directly related to that damn boondocks episode. That yes. that booty yeah. warrior episode when they was in prison, <laughs> and they were all real. talking about. Oh, you you want to tell the story, or I can oh, <laughs> slavery story. story. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, bro? First off, hello What's everybody. Up? What's Big up? Fan of all y'all, Mr. Krim. I, man, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm glad to see you here. Appreciate I, you, bro. Thank hey, you, man. Thank you for here. I love you, <laughs> everybody else's content. I love y'all too. Um, quick story. I went to my 10 year high school reunion back in. Raleigh, North Carolina, just to give y'all some commentary. Where it just, it's somewhere that matters. You feel me? You so, like <laughs> Raleigh, North Carolina, see a guy that I played football with. I told Jay Sean, it's always my old football teammates. I'm seeing the correlation of where this goes. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And so, um, 
Yeah, see him. Dinner. See him. We go to dinner. Like, oh, let's link up. Go to dinner. Let's chat up. Talk back. Reconnect. Whole dinner goes fine. It's the last 10 minutes. I didn't know it was the last 10 minutes because it wasn't until this moment. And I said to myself, it's going to be the last 10 I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Um, I talked to, I talked to do a little also context. I knew that he had a criminal, um, he had some criminal past in between the time we had disconnected. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so it did some time and got out. Now he's in the trucking business. Cool. He, we talk about, how on the commer- on the commercial we were watching college football, but a Kamala ad popped up. So then we get to that's just how we ended up getting the chat in. And I was talking about immigration and my girlfriend about how things are this. So that's how we just got into it. Speaking to him, I said, I don't know if you're voting or not at the time because I didn't know that at the time. But it was I don't know if you're voting or not. But hey, I am not l- telling you to lean one way or another. But hey, I want to let it be known that one side for sure. Because I think he said, like, I don't get too much into it. Uh, Both sides be such and such. And I said, okay, brother, I got you. One side for surely, I know, is against us. And I can tell you on a number of different places on how they're against us. I one started with, then he told me about his criminal past. I said, hey, anything about helping helping um reformed convicts reformed after they reformed incarcerated people after they get out of jail to like get any type of program to get back into civilization is i promise you is a democratic policy more times yeah. than not a republican did not put that forward yeah. he then tells me he said hey by the way i did get um a program funded to get my trucking license thing mm-hmm. i said I, I, exactly. So you one <laughs> percent have b- benefited from policies. He was like, "Okay, I don't know." I'm like, "Okay, all right, I got you, brother. I got, all right, all right, I got a two plus two. I got you." <laughs> Listen, I can tell you right now for sure. One side is telling us that they don't want any criminal, um, critical race theory in any of oh. our classrooms. They want to ban any um, history of our people and of learning about slavery and stuff like that right there. He goes, are we sure slavery happened the way they said it did? Oh, I said, I'd have been like, who the fuck in the face? (laughs) (laughs) You're the fuck in the face. There's a black man, a black man that I'm with here. I said, hold on. Yet, who is they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, who is they? Who is, yeah. I said, you know what? No, it's absolutely, it's it actually worse. is worse than what they it's tell worse, us because they're actually. trying to hide it from us and we learn something yeah. new every day. I learn something yeah. new about slavery every day. And he was like, uh, I said, okay, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. I see, I see. I've, I'm, yeah. So I just wanted to wow. tell you. Time yeah. is on. Pe- These yeah. Yeah. I'm having, this is happening in real life. Where, where the Before. slave ships is what I hear. I had a three-hour <laughs> argument with another guy we so, know in North Carolina. Three hours of him explaining to me how he just don't trust Kamala. Same high school, by the way. Just mm. different years of age of people. No, just mm. don't trust Kamala, but he liked Donald Trump. That's a like, I'm having incredible. these conversations in real life, and I never had them before. So I'm like, I can't act like there's not a rise. It's, it's made its way to my real life. <laughs> y- y'all are bringing up yeah. great points, and I don't know. Yeah. Like, y'all obviously haven't met me before. A lot of y'all. Um, like, I'm, let y'all go. I- I'm y'all. an archaeologist I'm in, in real life. You. Uh, you know, oh, I'm an archaeologist yeah. in real life, and oh, I've dope. actually... And I'm one of the very few black archaeologists you probably Never ever met a black in your life. Before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so funny. I've, I've gotten literal arguments. <laughs> I've gotten to many arguments with other black people about this exact topic. And I've had black people tell me I'm no longer black. I'm not black. And then they have literally sent me videos of a random white man talking at a bar who is not an academic, none of those things trying to prove their point. So I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm not black, but you listening to this white man. Because he yeah. telling you the truth because he telling you what you want to hear. Yeah. Okay, y'all really, y'all really interesting. Okay, <laughs> y'all really interesting. And, and that's crazy to me. That's crazy I'll to me. I'll be having to tell people like, okay, you might be indigenous, but I'm, I'm my people from Africa. Because like yeah, people right. will get like, well, no, everybody, everybody ain't. I don't, because I don't have time to try to debate like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, well, for me, 
I just know me. Like, I don't know about you. But I'm African. <laughs> I think, you can't bring think, everybody uh, up to the same level of uh, understanding all the time. Shaheem. I said I understand why Harriet Tubman carried a gun at this point. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Real. Can you, you imagine? Can you, you imagine what that was like? <laughs> No, yes. <laughs> I think about it all the time. I'm like, so you want to be free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I find frustrating? And and I like and I get out what happened, but what I get a lot in my comments from everybody, but I care when I get it from black people, right? White people do it too. But I care when I get it from black folk of like you explain something, you make these videos, we do what we all do it, make this content, you explain a nuanced thing, you break it down, and then people are like yeah, but like this is still how like people feel, and we feel this way, and black men feel this way. And I'm like, at what point do your feelings not prioritize real people's life? Like that's what I like. What like reality? And that's the part I'm trying to figure out. Like when that's, am I supposed to deprioritize your feelings to the facts? That's the issue with uh, that's the, it. My, that's been my issue for years now, and I would say that it's just Republicans that do the feelings thing, but it's Democrats too. It. It was something I observed in Obama's campaign, uh, Clinton's campaign, even. It's like, I don't even know when it started, but I think it's easier to get on a large platform and broadcast, oh, you feel this way. This is terrible. Um, But I think it's reached a different crescendo with uh, Trump. I think Trump has mastered the art of blasting out so many lies like lies per second record has got to be his like just <laughs> lies lies <laughs> lies <laughs> to the, to the, yeah, right, right to the point where you have to swim through them and you can't fact check fast enough because they keep coming at you but like he's mastered the fact of like oh i'm not going to cite anything ever i'm not going to quote anybody ever i'm just going to say oh i heard and if it's not true then you know maybe it's true i don't even know like he'll be confronted about something he lied directly to your face about and be like oh well you know i don't know if it's true but you know maybe it is i heard this i saw this on tv and what I think about the, the geese I think, yeah what about yes, the geese? he recently the did that exact thing in an interview well, yeah about, the, about the geese and the haitians and but once you get to the point where where once you get to that point, there is no coming back from it. And so like, that was honestly one of the impetuses for my entire channel was like, oh, okay, so everybody's just gonna blast disinformation out there. Okay, well, I'm gonna cite my sources like a journalist in every video. And, you know, leave, leave behind this atmosphere where we're just gonna be arguing about, oh, my opinion is this, my homie said this, my cousin said this, who gives a f-? This is that, all that shit is not true. Like, here's what peer-reviewed studies have shown. Here's what professional journalists have dug up. Here's what scientists are saying. Now, they may not be entirely correct. They might not be entirely correct. Like, there, there's flaws in their, in their way of thinking and all that, too. But let's at least start from a basis of relative fact and argue from that standpoint as opposed to how we feel in general, because that can go all directions. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shaheem. I'm so sorry, but I have like cited so many sources. I'm a therapist, so I talk about yeah. mental health a whole lot. Yeah. Don't get me started on my my war with pop psychology. I <laughs> can cite every source in the book. A lot of people just do not give a fuck about that these days. I have to be honest. 100%. Um, yeah. 100%. I think we kind of all hinted at like the the way that the internet and social media has elevated like everybody's voice um and yeah. stupidity i hate to say it like this but stupidity can be amplified stupidity. too 100%. and there's nothing more scary than a bunch of stupid people agreeing with each other about some stuff mm-hmm. that's yeah. not factual. Mm-hmm. Uh, like i've literally it, seen that that's 100 percent. i recently seen a video it was an ai ass video about uh supposedly tim wall's a student who they're trying to say was sexually assaulted by him. It was so obviously AI, y'all. It looked like the fakest yeah. shit I'd ever seen. And mm. under the comments talking about, oh my it. God, I can't believe this. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, are we looking at the same thing? No, I, I a, literally, it was- a war was... at this point, bro. <laughs> it, it's absolutely. A war, a war against this information. Like, and, and it's like, I know that, you know, I'm not, I'm just one small pocket of YouTube, but I think, I think every single person matters in this fight. Um, I think if we lose this war, there, there, there is no, there is no going back. The only way somebody like Trump can win an election in the first place is because there is no fact checking. 
if if in a world where we actually laid out everything he said and pointed it out in real time to everybody every time he spoke this would be a completely different conversation because they, they'd have yeah. to be they would they would be forced in real time not after the fact not an article not a correction that comes after the broadcast they'd be have they'll have to force it forced to face it in real time like oh he just lied to my face oh he just did it again Oh, he did it again. Like it would, it would take, it, it, everything takes repetition. I come from the advertising world. You mm. have to see an ad seven, eight times before you even like, oh, maybe I'll buy that. So we need to see that he's lying over and over and yeah. over. But once you cross the line where everybody's like, cool, all politicians lie, it's a normal thing. Why do we even have debates anymore? Did y'all watch the last, last uh, yeah. debate? Yes. Why do we even do this shit anymore? There's, there's <laughs> nobody fact checking. There's nobody even talking about policies anymore. What the fuck are we doing? Like and, you and get you too know, far no, hey, beyond absolutely. that line. I think Donald you're, you're Trump uh, lowered the bar. Donald Trump lowered the bar. Yeah. Um, the bar is I done. It doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like I, I worry about what you're is. saying because I, I, I think that the information, I think the information war, I think that's lost. Like I, this, this technology is only gonna get better. I think there's going to eventually there's going to be a brief window of time when people remember when you could prove something. <laughs> but that was, you know, there's going to be yeah, a before yeah. then and after then it, that's that's going to be. Yeah, I'm afraid of what's coming. I will say I don't think I don't I think proving things he's is going like to fly out the window. He's an amalgamation to me of just like of everybody, like of mostly white insecurity, you know, and fe feeding into that. We're being replaced. We're losing this, especially after Obama. And there's just this feeling of like they're losing things. And for those of us who are going over there, there's a feeling of we aren't able to to provide or we aren't able to be uh, a, what we a view as a man in this society. And one of the things that I don't think we touch on a lot to get in my history bag real quick is like the like the deindustrialization of our society, where it's like where I live now, I live outside of Chicago about 45 minutes away and Caterpillar was really big out here. And a lot of black folks came to this town called Joliet for those, those good factory jobs. They was able to make a lot of money, provide for their family, get a pension, all of that. But by the end of the seventies, those jobs are gone. Those jobs are being, you know, overseas and you have Reagan and then you got the war on drugs and like the complete decimation of, I don't even think we fully comprehended. We talk about slavery and we should, Jim Crow, we should. But y'all, the the eighties, the the early like the, that was a wild time that just tore apart everything in the fabric of our communities. So a lot of those jobs being gone, and then the school system, we operate off of it's a sedentary. So we're going from you know helping kids get into trades to a sedentary style where it's just you sitting down for seven eight hours a day school to prison mm -hmm. pipeline right like we have a, a a a group of young black men who don't have any advocates in their immediate community outside of maybe the coach who's screaming at them <laughs> you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying to, to hit somebody or whatever but like you don't see a black man in the class maybe or you when you get up because you can't sit still that long you're being ridiculed you're you getting the iss you're being thrown out of school so then you're looking for somebody to affirm who you are and lo and behold, you're going to find this guy on the blog just saying stuff that sounds good because he could communicate. And then you got this politician who is like the white embodiment of the rap, like capitalist archetype that we've seen throughout our life. And I feel like all of that combined is, is, is Trump and where we are now, in short. You, you, yeah. you know, and you know what's scary? I think, I, I think my last thing I want to say is like, Everybody want to be devil's advocate. Like everybody always want to play devil's advocate, but nobody wants to critique the devil. Because what I realize <laughs> is like, I swear to you, like people yeah. will, they will eat up you criticizing criticism for a progressive, criticism for a Democrat, criticism for a leftist, criticism for anybody on your side. They num, 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 num. The minute you want to like do the fact checking, you want to explain you do the work or, or like on, on the right, the real... They they will not watch I, it. It honestly blows my mind. Like I when I go, I go to like other content creators, like stuff just to confirm I'm not the only one experiencing this foolishness. Like I've seen, like I watched Medi do like a 10 minute like thorough breakdown and explaining this election, and it was just people in the comments like I'm not gonna watch this because they know yep. they know yep. they don't even want to they do not want to dare hear fact because yep. God forbid they internalize some facts that dispels the bullshit that they want to be screaming about. Like I know yep. it all the time. Anytime somebody asks me to make a video. Video that's like sensible and productive and like oh let's address something that's happening in real time I'm like ain't nobody gonna watch it i can make it but nobody watch it like i made a video 
well, my issues with like, I like seeing kind of my, my videos with my issues with Kamala, whatever, 84,000 views, even the second one, 50,000 views. I made one like a whole ex breaking down Project 2025 and the issues with Donald Trump and on the Supreme Court, like real, like way more factual information research. But, what, 30,000 views? They're not watching that shit. Like, then they then they cuss and they'll be in the comments. That. You'll get all the flack and all the negativity and all of this, like, for even doing the thing that they won't even watch. They won't even, like, internalize it. So, like, that's the thing yep. that's that's really hard to beat, like, because not only is everything set up to, like, make sure your messenger doesn't get out and that you can't fact check propaganda and that, but the, the populace ain't working with you either to get it out. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Because so many, it's like, you know, it's like how the lie travels faster than, than the truth. People enjoy the lie. Like, they enjoy yep. It all and because it's all entertainment like they like the outrage of it they don't see the you know what i mean they think people like us are just like, you you you're doing too much you're too upset you're making a big deal yeah. out of everything and because they don't see like how a lot of these other things are political too they just see us as like nuisances you know what i mean people who are just mm -hmm. complaining and nitpicking and yada 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 and they won't sit down to let you thread it all together to explain mm. how it's related mm. yeah no, you talking about the hate. You talk about the comments. The the pushback uh, is is brutal. My most recent video, I actually went to D.C. I was talking to politicians. There were there were House Democrats, and and House senators are coming up in the next one. And it was just like, I think I think even the closer you get to actually giving them truth from the source, from a cited source, or from the actual people who make these laws, they're pissed off that you even had the nerve to do it. Like they're just like, they're like F you, like, and I'm like. Look, I'm just bringing you all the information. Who else is giving you this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's all, a few people on YouTube that are trying to give you firsthand information from people who can actually change things. And I'm not even saying you have to support these people or vote for them, but at least listen to what they have to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they're so focused on whether you're a shill or not that they're not taking the information in whatsoever. Uh, it, it, it is, it is like deflating at times. Like, I was, I was talking to my girlfriend and I was like, look, I, it's one of the first times since I started this and I've had some rough videos, but it's the first time where I was like, I don't know how long I want to do YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when you're pushing that hard against um, that much resistance mm -hmm. and that much like willful stupidity, that's tough. Like that's really tough. Cause you think you're fighting the good fight. And then you're like, I, maybe I can't win this. Yeah. So, yeah I know that feeling. Point, like, yeah. I, maybe I, 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 I totally I can't win this. I, I totally understand, and and I'm, I come from a little bit of different perspective because I don't make content, but I, I am a union organizer uh, out here, you know. And um, one of the hardest things is like just organizing in general, talking to people, trying to convince them to even participate. Uh, yeah. Like you know, being in a union, that's difficult. You know, people think of themselves as individuals, not as a collective. So when you do collective action, people do still see themselves as separate. So what often happens is like the union did this. Th they did this. I'm like, did you participate? Did you vote? Did you go out to the picket? Did you do the thing we asked you to do to see the structure test, see where we're at to reach a critical mass to do a particular uh, collective action? Did you do any? Of you didn't do any of that. Nobody's going to come save you. Yeah. Nobody is going to come save you. We we have to do this as a collective. And it is really, mm -hmm. really difficult to even convince people of that simple thing. And I'm, this is not just exclusive to uh, to unions and stuff like that. Like I just recently canvassed uh, in Arizona to, you know, potentially um, uh unionize a battery plant that they're putting out there and stuff like that. All these different things for the community and whatnot, a lot of people are detached. The, the, the type of or sense of community doesn't exist in the way that it used to exist. Everybody is so individualistic. And if you not yeah. helping them immediately or with the exact thing that they want, fuck you. I have mm -hmm. people literally telling me that. They were just like, <laughs> you never did anything for, uh, for me, blah, 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 blah. Did you do anything for yourself? You know, you're having these issues. Do you wanna make those things and situations better? These are questions that you have to ask. And I think that is something that we struggle with in all of this conversation that we're having, whether it's with black men, black people or whatever, our sense of community seems to be dwindling, especially I think since the pandemic and whatnot, everything being you know remote or virtual and stuff like that, uh, there's just like a, a lack of 
community that I think we used to have, even compared to when I was a child, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it, it's like in infecting black men, especially, I think, yeah. you know, it's just like, I'm gonna get mine. People... <clears throat> you, I'm gonna get mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think black people have yeah. always been in a, in a vulnerable place as a minority just because we and like after the pandemic, like you were saying and all that stuff, the, the erosion of collectivism, I think it's hit us especially hard because our identity is so politicized, right? Like um, Juneteenth is not seen the same way as like um, St. Patrick's Day. The, we are not we don't just get to right. take pride in something and eat some tacos or whatever. Like we... Um, everything everything comes with side eye uh, uh when you're black and yeah. and part of that narrative is that the civil rights movement our collectivism happened all already happened a long time ago and it's over um and yeah we see you know mm -hmm. upright i mean 2020 we saw a huge we saw a huge movement but you also i don't know it, it, it seems like those things um those things get stamped out as soon as they rise up now it's like um as soon as uh mm -hmm. now now that now like um corporations are ready for those things they're ready to <laughs> accept those things and like redisseminate mm -hmm. them as a as a product uh so they can't function the same way right right i think we are really um like there's this thing i think we do in politics i don't have the term for it but we relinquish our power and our our ability to advocate for ourselves to people that we don't yeah. even know, especially a president to one person. And I think that speaks to the bigger issues because we expect Obama to, to, to solve all the issues. We expect Biden. We expect Kamala, you know, just to like, and like maybe it's because we're taught from a Western framework and we're taught about all eight kings and stuff. And we just assume that translated, even though they revolted against that we just assume that's what it is but it's like you also got to have congressional support and it's like I, i've been trying to rephrase it too when i tell people like what well, kamala's like you're voting for a team the cabinet she put in yeah. like the the judges like when i was becoming an educator y'all social science i wasn't even i wasn't even taught all this i wasn't taught about all mm -hmm. the different layers to how many judges i was taught teach about the nine justices teach about the four hundred you know and, and that's pretty and i think that speaks to the miseducation we all have we, and, and again the idolatry in america we talk like when we learn about black issues we learn about get y'all the five uh frederick Douglass, harriet tubman rosa parks dr king and malcolm x we mm -hmm. never, for one, we, what about 1865 to 1955? Like, what what right. happened? <laughs> Ida B. Wells, yeah. we don't learn about, you know what I'm saying, barely the Harlem Renaissance. But we yeah. don't talk about the people that surrounded those folks. Joanne Robinson with the Montgomery Bus Boycott. And I try, mm -hmm. I always tried as best I could to let people know, like, there are there were people in every community organizing. When Dr. King went there, he had to tap in with them. It wasn't just mm -hmm. one thing, but America will exalt the one person. So we would have to say, well, if that one person ain't doing it, then it's their fault. And I don't have to do anything. No, Kamala ain't going to solve your problems. We just hope that she makes it easier for us to organize. That's it. That's yeah. it. it. Yeah. Like, That's literally it. Feel this 100%. pressure. I, I want the LBJ. I want the FDR. I want the Lincoln. Like, feel this pressure that we're going to bring. Yo, mm -hmm. as an immigrant, especially like when I say like for me, it's so it's so like there's nothing theoretical when I say make it like it, it is about making it easier to organize and to advocate because Donald Trump, like I don't I'm an immigrant, like what immigrant like I'm an immigrant by status, not like my parents are immigrants. Like I'm the immigrant who came to America, still an immigrant, not a U.S. citizen. So I feel things differently. I see things differently. I get a different angle. Right. It, during during Trump's administration, like I've talked about it multiple times about my visa denial and stuff. Everybody knows like Trump tried to throw me out of here. So that's that. But beyond that, Donald Trump had us fill out our forms like all of a sudden immigrants were obligated to turn over our social media. There was a reason for that. Like, oh, we have to tell them what our social media accounts are because now they're going to check our social media and they're going, you're going to be punished for that. They could get you out of here. So like it's real life. Like I can't advocate the way and talk and do the things and say the things that you want. Like I always tell people, there's a reason why you don't hear like 
I always say Americans talk about immigration. They talk about immigrants all day f-ing long and Americans do not understand. They don't know the first thing about their immigration system. They don't know shit. They literally don't know shit. It's just constant, mm-hmm. just missing. Even from like the lawyers, the journalists on the TV, they don't know anything about anything. And I always say the people will be like, oh, why don't you like go and talk about immigration? Why don't you advocate around immigrant, like immigration? Why other immigrants aren't advocating? I'm like, because immigrants are not in the position to tell our stories. Immigrants are not in the position to be advocate for ourselves as, as not citizens in the country. And by the time an immigrant can, they've been thrown out their back, their wherever, you know? So it's like, that is a, that is a very real thing that people don't take into consideration. I'm like, beyond the fact that there's no Republicans is a stone wall. There is no, there's no shaming Republicans. There's no pushing Republicans. There's no muscling Republicans. There's no conjoling Republicans. Republicans look at your hatred for them as an endorsement. I was literally in Ron DeSantis's campaign ad four times for calling him the devil. He was like, he was like, mm, raving endorsement. This black woman says, I am Satan. Vote for me. Right. Like, that's, like yeah. that's, that's how they're thinking. You know what I mean? No, so I'm just they like, they're not, they're not comparable. Like whether or not you think like, it's not about liking Kamala or liking the Democrats is anything genuine. But I do know that the Democrats can just for no other reason than they have to. They have this as a part of their voter base. They have to listen to somebody, but they might not listen to everybody and they might not listen to everybody on everything, but they got to listen to some people. Republicans are not only not, doing what we want they are listening to us so that they could do everything we don't want they listen to us intently so that they could be against and organize against us so trying to own the libs trying to own the libs and the problem is not only are they trying to own the libs but the left is trying to help them too trying to help Mm. them own like own the left too and i'm just like (laughs) you know that's you know that's us too right boo look to to what they did with the word woke i was going through project 2025 And even the holes, even though even the summary on the on their website of Project 2025, they put woke propaganda like and it's actually in the document like they they've used woke in official documents now. And not only have they ruined that term, it doesn't mean what they say it means, of course, but they've actually used it as a badge of pride to fight against and crush what they consider woke. And in their eyes, it's just black people in uh, LGBTQIA community and just everybody else that doesn't fit within their paradigm, which is right. I've ridiculous. I've heard black people use their definition of woke and it made me want to jump off a fucking cliff. Yes. Yep. <laughs> right. Like I, I think it's one thing to admit like, that the word is it's one thing to admit that the word is done. You just did you don't even know what you just did, mm. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing to admit that no, the word I, is like I, I over with, but to internalize it and start using it, like I don't that 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 and, I, and even when when somebody does that, because it's part of the lexicon, right? Like that's just how people talk now. But when some when a black person does that, I like I check them still. I'm like, don't please don't play into that. Please don't talk like that. I don't know them yep. anymore. If a black person does that to me, I like know that this is not their black kind. And I swear, I can't speak to them. Like, we're, we're not going to get along nope. and they need peace in their life just like I do. There's no point. <laughs> like, like, fight 100%. For this person all, right? Because I'm like, that, that's too far gone. Like, it, it reminds me like my great aunt would like be like, anytime I come around, my great aunt is like, and my niece is like, oh, here she go with this blackity black stuff all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, and I would prefer like, why that. Is that <laughs> I'm like, no, they really treat me like, I come around in a whole damn hat. <laughs> That's really no, cool. they don't. They don't like hearing it. They just don't <laughs> like hearing it. You realize quickly when you're like when you are like the actual definition of woke. You notice even your family is like, ah, I don't want to talk about it. No, I like, get, get. You know yeah, how like, crazy it is to be labeled pro black by black people. Like, yes, it's, right. It's like, yes. What, what does that mean for you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you anti black? Like, <laughs> yes, and it's and it's really real. And you know, and you not only know when you're that person, you know all the other people that are that too. Like Jay Sean yeah. and I got to call each other because the rest of our friends don't want to hear this shit. <laughs> exactly. That's real. That's a hundred percent real. That's yeah. 100% real. Oh, this has been amazing, y'all. Thank you for this amazing episode. Yeah.